right up and get your tickets for another moment in gaming history. Most of us today take the internet for granted. You wake up, unlock your phone, scroll through some social media, maybe put in some orders for things to be delivered to your house, browse various sites for recreation and research, either work on personal projects, when you get home, you might stream a movie or walk into a gaming session with a few friends, maybe an FPS or an MMO. No one really gives it a second thought in today's world of constantly connected devices and data streams. Things weren't always this way though. Years ago, in the faraway times of the 80s and early 90s, most of us not only went to the store to rent games from places like Blockbuster, we had to go out to get almost anything. Gaming consisted of getting friends together to sit around a couch, or pack up your entire PC rig and drag it to somebody's house, and spend sometimes more than the time you spent gaming setting up a network to actually play the games against each other. I know it sounds odd, even bizarre, to many of us to drag an entire PC, along with monitor and all, to a friend's house to play games against each other, and it is. But in some ways, it's a lot of fun. Half the fun all it meant was coming with fighting with your friends over how to get the stupid network running, and then telling them what for by shooting them dead in deathmatch. Good times. Good times. However, the convenience of the internet had a lot of ramifications. Not only for businesses, but for video games as a whole. Some good, and some not so good. So let's take a look at uh, how the internet got started, its early commercial years, and how it really kicked off a massive change in the gaming landscape. The internet actually got its start as a military defense project in order to have a reliable source of communication that couldn't be disrupted by bombs or enemy spies. Think Cold War era. To that end, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, began working on designing a network of interconnected computers for use between military facilities, eventually expanding this use between various different universities as well. However, it stayed very terminal-based and limited in scope. They needed a way to retransmit it without needing lines connected everywhere so it could be of use of military personnel in the field. So it was with a lot of work, they were able to actually package the data and transmit it to a dish relay that then transmitted it through RF signals to an entirely different location thousands of miles away as early as 1976. This technology would continue to increase and become more useful, not only in military, but in the private sector. Till eventually, in 1991, the gaming industry would have a bit of a revelation, when Neverwinter Nights would become one of the first MMOs, opening up new worlds that we could play together cooperatively with up to 96 players that could be on the same server at the same time, along with a DM. This opened up new opportunities for shared gaming that no one had seen before. Later on, Doom would follow suit in 1996, adding online multiplayer to complement their already popular land-based multiplayer modes, and the internet revelation for video game was beginning. This isn't to say the games hadn't really gone online before. Multiple services had existed in the past, from a television setting up an online streaming source for games, Nintendo having attachments for online play with the NES, and most notable the Sega Channel in the early 90s as well. But this was something far more tangible and reliable. The technology had finally caught up enough, and it was about to change the way we design, develop, and the way the gamer mentality would approach video games completely. Games would begin offering extra content to players for a small nominal fee, DLC to be exact. The first game I could find that actually did this was Total Annihilation, released on the PC in 1997. This would offer new units each month for a small nominal fee, and would build in Steam until by 2003, Steam, all puns intended, would launch and start offering full games to the PC market, and within a few years pretty much kill all physical sales. Xbox would begin to pioneer this area more on consoles, offering content to games like Splinter Cell, Halo 2, and Ninja Gaiden. Today DLC and online gaming has taken on an entire life of its own. Games are built more around playing cooperatively and competitively online. Some like the early Pioneer Evolve would give more asymmetrical gameplay a go, pitting four cooperative players against a more powerful monster controlled by a fifth player. This would go on to spawn its own ever-growing online genre. MMOs would continue to gain popularity with games like EverQuest, WoW, and Final Fantasy, just to name a few. Online shooters would become more the norm, with games like Counter-Strike, Battlefield, and Overwatch. So it was that LAN parties and couch co-op became less and less of a thing, and online voice chat with parties across the world became more the norm. Couch co-op would often be removed from the development process as people saw online play as more of a necessity. More to the point, more revenue would be gained from games online by having a presence there 
and its initial sales, and the packs of player cards being sold in sports games, gun skins, and other decent extras would be offered to enhance the online experience and maximize revenue. It's safe to say the internet has not only changed how we react and interact with each other, but how we approach gaming and our gaming purchases. Many of us won't even think about picking up a game if it doesn't have a solid online experience. While others have almost entirely turned away from online gaming completely, avoiding anything that's not touted as a single player only experience. But what are some of your opinions on how the internet has changed gaming? What would you change? What would you like to see more of? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. And if you could do me one more favor, please leave this video a like. And if you haven't, consider subscribing. It really helps my channel out. But until next time, happy gaming.